So today, this is coffee with Amber. We're not we're not calling it that. No? no. Welcome back anyways. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform or you can go to my website at thereligioushippie.com. I know I've done a lot of beginner guides before, ones on the mass, ones on TLM and prayer journaling, things of that nature. But today I really wanted to dive more into prayer itself for those who maybe are unfamiliar with how to start praying. So I first wanted to start us off with a quote from St. Therese of Lisieux. She states, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned towards heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy. So through prayer, we are uniting ourselves with God and Christ and allowing God to speak truth into our lives and hopefully fulfill his will for us. I also wanted to take a quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church 2559, which states, prayer is the rising of one's mind and heart to God or the requesting of good things from God. But when we pray, do we speak from the height of our pride and will or out of the depths of our humble and contrite heart? He who humbles himself will be exalted. Humility is the foundation of prayer. Only when we humbly acknowledge that we do not know how to pray as we ought, we are ready to receive freely the gift of prayer. Man is a beggar before God. So the whole reason we do pray is to have a relationship with God and to basically grow in holiness. Without prayer, we cannot grow in faith and we can't grow in virtue. Prayer in our lives is necessary and vital to being Christian. So when we are praying, we should be desiring God's will for us. This can be really hard, especially for those of us who struggle with, you know, trying to control our lives. We might be control freaks. We might be anxious about what's to come in the future and we wanna have control over that. But with time and dedication through prayer, we can start giving those anxieties and things to God so that he can take care of it. Because honestly, let me tell you, once that's lifted off of your shoulders, that whole responsibility of feeling like you have to know the next step, it's just so amazing to have that weight lifted off your shoulders. So I highly suggest you ask God to give you the virtue of being able to let go of those things. It took me a long time to get the hang of prayer and I still have some issues with it, but my spiritual director has been a huge help in helping me with growing in prayer and virtue. So just remember to take it slow and do it from the heart. So with all of that being said, let's get into how to start in prayer and things you can implement to make it a little bit easier. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to get started. The first thing you have to realize is that prayer is actually a habit, which means it's something we need to cultivate, we need to learn it, and we need to continue practicing it. So habits usually take about 30 days to form, and then after that you have to keep up with them, otherwise, you know, you might fall off the bandwagon. So make sure you have patience with yourself and make sure that you're prioritizing prayer in your schedule. Now, a lot of people think that in order to have a fruitful prayer life, they have to spend hours and hours in prayer, but this isn't actually true. A lot of the times it's more fruitful and probably better for our schedule if we break prayer up throughout the day. The most important thing is the quality of prayer. Is your heart in it or is it just something you're trying to check off your schedule? Because five minutes of heart-filled prayer is more fruitful than an hour of just scheduled prayer. A lot of people also tend to struggle with distractions during prayer. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have animals, maybe you have parents, maybe you have siblings. It doesn't matter. There's always gonna be some type of distraction that's keeping us from having that meditative prayer with God. So it's really Really important that we find some silence even if it's only five minutes at the beginning of your day sometimes you have to wake up five minutes earlier than you originally would to get in that five minutes of prayer even if it's just a 30 second morning offering that is more fruitful than doing no prayer at all However, if you do have a lot of distractions, that's okay too. That's really why it's important for Catholics to have their homes surrounded with Catholic imagery and statues and icons. It reminds us to lift our hearts to heaven and to pray throughout the day. A lot of people tend to get dry in their prayer life as well because they're doing the exact same prayers over and over and over again. Or they're doing a prayer that is highly suggested by people they're with, so they almost feel peer pressured into doing the exact same prayer, even though it doesn't really give them any type of spiritual fruit. So I highly suggest you do some research on some prayers that might benefit your spiritual life and your state in life as well. If you're a young girl in school, maybe you might benefit from some novenas that involve school. If you're uh, a couple looking to get engaged, maybe you guys would benefit from a St. Valentine novena. Just things like that. So research different prayers and definitely find one that fits you and your state in life. And then of course there's always some other prayers you can go to that we always pray, like the Rosary, the Angelus, the Divine Mercy, 
Mercy chaplet. There's just so many options, but also don't overwhelm yourself because literally the treasury of prayers is it's a lot. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to stay consistent in your prayer life because this is this is not easy. <laughs> It's really hard. The first thing you want to do is you want to get an accountability partner, somebody you can trust with, you know, the ups and downs of your own prayer life and who can keep tabs on you through your prayer journey. Usually I would not suggest a family member. I would suggest somebody of the same sex and usually in the same age range. Um, friends are great too, if they're trusted in that way, but sometimes a priest is better. I got my priest on speed dial. <laughs> Another thing that involves staying consistent is scheduling your day around prayer, not prayer around your day. If prayer is actually something that's important to you, you would put it in with the priorities of everything else you have to get done that day. But a lot of people don't view it as a priority, they just view it as, oh, I'll just do it when I have time. Well, to be honest, we don't really have time unless we schedule time, because we could literally spend five hours on Instagram and not pray at all that day, and we'd be like, oh, I just didn't have any time. You did have time, but you were on social media. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about is prayer aids. So I usually have the Hollow app on my phone, but I realized pretty quickly from downloading the app that I actually don't like having my phone on me when I pray because even though I am on the Holo app, I'll get notifications to Instagram and text messages and things, and it's really hard for me to focus in that kind of setting, so I don't even have my phone on me when I do pray. But maybe that's something that you do enjoy. You like having your phone on you because you have a compilation of your prayers and your phone notes or something of that nature. That's great. Um, it just really wasn't for me. If you enjoy that though, good for you. Some other prayer aids you can use are videos, audios, and then books. I think it was St. Therese of Lisieux who said she never goes to adoration without a good book, which I think is really helpful because I just started going back to mass with my missal and I found out that it actually helps me quite a lot pray along with the mass and not get distracted as much. Two other apps you guys can download onto your phones is the iBrevery app and the Laudate app. Uh, these are a little bit more advanced, but they usually have vespers, morning prayers, compline, like a bunch of different prayers on there that you can also implement into your prayer life. If you want to join the religious brothers and sisters in their morning prayers, late morning prayers, afternoon prayers, mid-evening prayers, evening prayers. There's a lot. Another thing you can do is you can set the mood by lighting candles, uh, playing some Gregorian chant, having some religious artwork in your prayer corner or wherever you pray. And in general, that just really helps set the mood and get your mind into the mindset for prayer. I personally find it very helpful when I burn incense because it kind of reminds me of mass and I love mass. It's one, one of the places that I feel the most comfortable praying. And so because of that, I love lighting some incense. Now don't light so much incense that the fire department has to come to your house. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it happened at my old church. We lit so much incense that it just, the fire department had to come. Don't do that. But I always find those prayer aids to be extremely helpful in my prayer life. So hopefully they're helpful in your prayer life. And with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this video. I hoped it helped any beginner prayer prayers. <laughs> with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hoped it helped any of you guys that were struggling on your prayer journey, or maybe you're really good in your prayer journey and you just needed a little reminder of the basics. Who knows? But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!